Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Um, it's Laura and Gustavo with you for the next 30 minutes. Um, what we're going to do today is talk about a very new solution, a very exciting solution called Orbit Note. It's going to help you with PDFs. That's all I'm going to say. You're going to see it as we go through it. Just a wee bit of housekeeping. On the right hand side, there is an area for you to put in questions, feedback. Please, please, please do get involved as we go through any questions you have. I know some of you that signed up today actually use Orbit Note already, so it'd be great to hear from you. Um, I'm going to pass over to Gustavo now, who's just going to explain Orbit Note, go through a few slides, and then we'll go straight into a demo. Brilliant. Thanks, Laura. Well, I'm actually not going to explain Orbit Note in detail because Laura is going to be our lovely student today, actually. Pretty much we're going to do a little bit of a almost a role play so laura is going to be doing like this. she's going to be the student that's going to be using a pdf and an orbit node in it for the first time so that's going to be fun stick stick with us for a few slides just a couple of slides to create a little bit of context here we're going to talk about pdfs the question is why pdfs in in this day and age pdfs have been out there for a long time and they're still here and that's why we're talking about a pdf so PDFs have a lot of positives, um, and that's why we like them. That's why they're still out there. Um, as you know, there are plenty, plenty of resources available on the internet, maybe from those files that you worked on several years ago, scan books, scan worksheets, so an abundance of resources for teaching and learning. Teaching because teachers, you guys, you can use it to create assignments, you can use it to actually make a class maybe more interactive. And for learning, because we as learners as well, we use PDFs just to find out about certain topics, to research, we just go into the internet, and we download things. So most of that stuff is on PDFs. So it's there for teachers and for learners. And then they are very good because they are uh, simply fantastic, uh, in protecting the integrity of the content and the design, right? So that's why they were made like that. They were created in such a way that we couldn't edit them, in such a way that we couldn't actually do anything with them, um, so that the information travels from the author to the actual reader without being changed, without being affected, and the design as well is part. Uh, it's a big part of it. So those are all positive things when we look at it from the integrity of the of the content of the information. But then, as we well know. There are some downsides, which is why many times we run away from PDFs, uh, which definitely happened a lot in the last couple of years. One is that if you want to do anything with that PDF, like completing information, adding things of your own, creating notes, anything like that, it's very hard. So if you're trying to do or recreate what were you doing, what were you doing? Sorry, what you were doing in the classroom with your students, which was basically. Uh, to work on a worksheet uh, and ask them to fill out the blanks or things like that on a PDF. Uh, it's very hard to do in an organized way, uh, in a way that actually keeps your students focused in the task rather than trying to find a way, trying to find a tool to um, fill out those blanks. So completion is definitely a massive challenge. And the other huge challenge is the accessibility that we have in a PDF document. Basically. Put it in simple words, the information in a PDF tends to be completely inaccessible. Basically, I can't do anything with the information there beyond reading it. And in the example that we're going to do with Laura, I think that's going to be uh, more clear. And we're going to make sure that you understand the importance of a document being accessible. So what we have. Uh, to help you and the students with this is orbit note, as Laura said, orbit note is a very simple toolbar. Uh, we love toolbars. Read and write is a toolbar. Equation is a toolbar. Orbit node is a toolbar. And the toolbar that you see on the screen uh, just have a, a section that you could say it's a first uh, two thirds of, of, of that toolbar is all about how I can access the information on the PDF better. So we'll see that we have text to speech, we have dictionaries, we have some, some things related to screen masking and translations and other or very very interesting tools there and then on the last third of the bar we have annotation tools that just by looking at that i am sure that you know what it does you know that it's very intuitive and if i put that tool or in front of you right now you wouldn't need any sort of training uh, which is what we want we want to keep this simple uh, we've made it for students and, and, and educators um, it's as like simple as it can get 
Just a little note, you can see that there's a, uh, like a, a section of that toolbar that I have highlighted uh, in a blue dotted rectangle that says features connected to read and write. So if you don't have read and write in your domain and you have downloaded Orbit Note from the Chrome store or, uh, or you're using Edge, you're downloading it from that store as well, um, you might be just using Orbit Note, you won't see that middle section because that middle section comes from read and write. So it basically means that that section is inherited from read and write. So if you have read and write in your domain, you will see that full toolbar that you see on my screen. But if you don't have read and write, you will only see the first section and the last section. Okay, so that might explain why, or that indeed explains why your toolbar might look a little bit shorter. All right, so that said, what we're gonna do, which is a fun bit, we'll see how we how we get on, Laura. <laughs> uh, so, so Laura's gonna be the student here uh, yeah. that's going to show us how it looks like to work on a PDF <clears> without, <throat> well, with Orbi Note actually. And I'm gonna guide her through a little bit. So that's you. Where are you right now, Laura? Can you see my screen? I've opened the PDF on the screen and I'm sharing my screen. I think, yeah. Yeah, perfectly. So you're yeah. you're open a PDF from your Google Drive, right? In yeah. your case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. So that's like the, the preview window of Orbit Notes, sorry, of Google Drive, and you have the option to open that with Orbit Note. So yep. open that with Orbit Note, please. There you go. Brilliant. So Laura is opening a PDF with Orbit Note, and we'll see the toolbar on the top of her screen in a couple of seconds. There you go. So we have that toolbar there that I just showed you. And the first thing that I think it's important to cover is that the text there that Laura has on screen is almost an image. So basically, Laura, you might want to select the text for different reasons. Just give us a couple of examples why you would be interested in selecting or highlighting a part of the text there. Yeah, um, well, straight away, the first thing I see when I see this is a lot of text. There's a lot of information and um, that straight away is putting me off. But if I was able to read it with the um, the play button, the way the fact that it's able to highlight it for me and the blue and yellow highlighting, to being able to hear loud means that I don't have to look at the screen constantly. PDFs are very text heavy sometimes, and even the way yeah. this layout, it's putting me off straight away. True. Yeah, exactly. So text to speech is a huge help mm -hmm. uh, just for to reduce the cognitive load or just I, I use it all the time. I do find it very hard to read a dense speech and keep my focus. Um, so having the double highlighting, having the voice mm -hmm. definitely helps a lot. And you cannot do that right now. Um, no. Also, so if I click, sorry, because if yeah, I click on the left hand side, even though the features are here, none of, none of them are working because this is an inaccessible PDF at the minute. Yeah, exactly. And that's just one example. Laura might want to copy and paste information and put it in a doc in an R document just to start creating her summary, or she might want to use dictionaries and maybe copy that into Google Translate. There's many reasons why um, I would like to actually access the information that is on screen, but I cannot do it. So think about how big of a barrier that is for your learners. So Laura, what I want you to do is use the scan text option that we have in, in Orbit Notes. So, on the right hand side, you'll see that blue box. So that means that Orbit Note, when you open the PDF, detected that that PDF doesn't have any text. Mm -hmm. And it's asking you if you want to scan the text and make it available for you. So click on the, uh, you can click on that button there that says, let's, let's scan it, right? Yeah. So the good thing about this is, um, as um, Gustavo was saying, we want to make this as user friendly as possible. This mm -hmm. pops up every time automatically. So there's nothing I need to do. So it's nearly prompting the student to do it, even if they don't know that it was there. So that I like, I really like that part of it. So I'm being prompted to do it. Yeah, and... that's a great point. And then yeah, you just select the language that it's it's already proposed by Orbit Note. It tells you how long it estimates it's going to take. If it's a very long document and it's going to take 10 minutes, you don't have to worry, just switch to another tab, leave it working in the background, and then we come back to it. And that's you. So what are we doing is, all we do is doing there now is scanning the text, and it will replace your original PDF. So you don't have to do this every time you open the PDF. So that's a PDF, and show us, Laura, now, can you highlight text? So I'm going to go back up to the toolbar on the left-hand side to the click and speak, and hopefully if I come across here, 
Anxiety disorders most erythrocyte disorders can be classified as amyas or polycythemias. So I'm not sure if you can hear that. I use the earphones just for my own. It's easier for me to work day to day and the noise, it's around the noise. So anyone that's familiar with any of our products, it's the text to speech that read that out perfectly. And as you've yeah. seen, it was using the dual highlighting, which I find very useful because instead of trying to look at this whole page of text, I'm actually hearing and tracking the word as it's being spoken, which helps me focus so much. Yeah, interestingly, you can hear it. Uh, oh, can you hear it a, 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 a you little can. bit? Yeah. You can hear it a little bit. Yeah, I thought I, yeah. Wanted, I was wondering where that was coming from. Um, so yeah, that's that's very useful. And just to make you a little bit more aware of how often this happens, we know that about or at least thirty percent of the documents that you work with are not accessible. That's huge. Uh, give it a go next time you open a PDF. Ask yourself, is this accessible? Would my students be able to work on this or not? Um, and then now we have kind of unlocked the power of the rest of yeah. the toolbar. So for example, Laura, I obviously uh, don't speak, English is not my first language. So I love using dictionaries while I'm reading something as complex as that. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to have it open and I like to use it all the time. In your case, having English as your first language, do you use dictionaries or why would you use them? Well, so I can tell you now, I don't understand half the words in this way. <laughs> has nothing to do with English as a second language. So especially college level, university level, you are going to come across as a student words that you're not really familiar with. It's new to you. So the good yeah. thing about this as a teacher, if, if I've been sent this from a teacher, I don't need to torture the teacher. I don't need to go online to look up the word. As Gustavo said, I can keep this dictionary open on the left hand side and just click on the different words. And as yeah. you can see, it's just changing. As you know, with all of our products, the text-to-speech works perfectly. I hit play and this will read this back to me as well. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. I, I use it all the time. And same thing, I don't use a picture dictionary as much, uh, but if you can show the picture dictionary yeah. as well. And uh, I, I usually have my dictionary and my translator both on different sides of the screen. That's the way I, I, I work. Uh, mm -hmm. If you can click on the translator as well. It's the one, yeah, there, that's the one. So I usually have that one and the dictionary and that's it. I mean, that's that's a massive help. Yeah. Uh, if I don't have that, what I do is I just try to understand the context and I just assume a few things. So yeah. it really adds a lot to my understanding to have dictionaries and translators on screen. In that case, we have it set to what language or I can't really read that. Um, I'm not sure. Let me just double check what language that is. It looks like French, but or French or Spanish, but I could be totally this is where I'm gonna get embarrassed. I don't know. Um <laughs> translation. Spanish, yes, I wasn't too very far good. off. Um, just when you said about the, <laughs> the visual dictionary, the visual dictionary is actually very popular. Um and no and this is what we always say, everyone is completely different. Yeah. And Gustavo said you said you don't particularly use it. I always thought when I moved to college is going from the school market to college market that it wouldn't be as popular. No matter who I show it to, they think that picture dictionary is amazing. And the fact then as well that you said you didn't like it, which was fine, but I can have the translator open as if yeah. I am looking at this from English as a second language. Yeah. Yeah, no, and that's that's the thing about these toolbar. Like you will use whatever suits your way of learning. Mm -hmm. Um maybe you are more visual and therefore you have the, the pictures there. In my case, because I'm translating pretty much everything. I have the translator there. So yeah, I mean, that's the beauty of it. Uh, and then obviously the super lovely highlighters because we really like them. Show us Laura what you can do uh, now that you can highlight information. What yep. can you do with the highlighters that we have there? Yeah, so as I said at the start, this here is very overwhelming for me to begin with. But as we know at a college level, I may want to take bits of this and use it for research or revision at a later stage, or just to minimize this, just to minimize what I need here to maybe answer a question that you've sent me. So the highlighter is here on the, towards the right hand side. As you can see, if I hover over each feature, it actually tells me what it does, which is very, very good for the students. So I'm gonna turn that on, choose a color and just highlight key points. So uh, you can choose different colors. It may be you might want pink for answers for your um, essay question and yellow might be for future information. So I'll just do I'll just do a few as a wee example. So I'm just highlighting through this. Even the fact that it's highlighted it now, I can focus on each paragraph if I want to and read it that way. Or let me just highlight one more tiny bit. 
I can collect the highlights. And anyone that's familiar with the read and write part of, um, or sorry, the highlight part of read and write, this is exactly what it does. And this is so popular at mm -hmm. college, at university level, being able to minimize your work, take key points from it and save this mm -hmm. doc, come back to this later. It tells you exactly where you got it from. You can move this about and then I can either answer the essay question, do my research, do my revision. So I've taken what looks like a very large piece of information and minimized it. So there's loads of reasons my, why I may want to do that, but there's one simple tool that will help you do it. Yeah, and then Laura, if we go back to where we started, an inaccessible PDF where I cannot even select the text, Yeah. imagine imagine the barrier that is in there. The equivalent would be me taking a manual note, uh, moving to an R sheet and starting to type that, how slow it makes and how like demotivating for the student it can be. Yeah, so that, or even I would, I would have printed this, which is not where we're always trying to get yeah, away from so, printed information. I would have had to go to a yeah. library. I would have printed it and use physical highlighters because that is the only way I could have processed that. So let's save the planet as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. That's nice one. No more printing. No more printing. <laughs> and then uh, how about the vocabulary list? Vocabulary list. So, well, you, I guess you would have to. Yes. Uh, so let me just undo. Yeah. Sorry, I am actually he, the way um, the way we're doing this because I was a teacher and I'm the student. I am <laughs> trying to remember where this stuff is. <laughs> it's been one of those weeks. That's so more I'm real just gonna... yeah, it is, exactly. So you I have need to get to rid just... of the highlighters first. So go to highlighters. Oh, cancel. Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I would love to use the excuse I haven't had my coffee, but I have. <laughs> um, clear highlights. That's there perfect. we go. Right. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm going to use the same highlighting tool, but what yeah. I'm going to do is highlight mm -hmm. keywords. So words that I've maybe looked up in a dictionary. Um, from Gustavo's point of view with English as a second language, something that he had to translate. So what I can do here is use the highlighters, but just like highlight keywords. So we'll just go through it. Again, it doesn't really matter what color you're using unless you're doing it for a specific reason. You maybe want them for different revision or essays. So I'm just going to try and find a few. So as I've went through this, maybe as I'm reading it, if I look something up in the dictionary, get in the habit of highlighting it. And instead of just using collect highlights, what I'm going to do here is use the vocabulary feature. Click it. And pray it works while we're live <laughs> online. Yes, it's no, just it taking a wee just second. Take, it just, it just takes a second. Yeah. But... Now, normally, if I am in front of people, there is a wow factor here. The mm -hmm. fact it has taken this word, it's given you the dictionary definition and the visual aid as well. I done nothing. I always, um, I'm always asked, oh, how did that create that word that come from? What else did you do? I've done nothing else. As a student, I've highlighted the word and hit this feature. Now, it took a few seconds to open. You just have to be patient, but it did do it. That created automatically for me. Yeah, so you have their definition, you have the picture that represents the word, and then you have a space where you can write your, your comments. And all of that is fully editable. Editable, it's yours. So it's your takeaway mm -hmm. home notes for studying and researching. Yeah. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. OK, cool. So and then so we've covered all that first part of the toolbar that actually was pretty much unlocked because we were able to scan the text on the screen. Um, remember, we started with a, with an image only PDF. And then the last part of the toolbar is as easy as using paint in Windows. Uh, so it's, it's pretty self descriptive, it's obvious. So Laura can, in this case, use uh, a text box tool or a freehand drawing tool, or you just use circles and lines. So for example, there Laura has the text box. And one thing that is very nice about Read and Write connected to Orbit Note is that you can see all the reading and writing supports there. So Laura has the text to speech, has prediction, and has as well a dictation tool. All of those things constantly um, supporting the student, whatever uh, the student is trying to write something. Uh, then you have as well, Laura, just throw a couple of lines in there with the freehand drawing tool as if you were maybe just marking a part of your of your text um so so it's as simple as that right mm -hmm. uh, you can change colors thicknesses and and the rest is history it's, it's very very simple to do the one that might not be as obvious but that is extremely useful are the comments so laura choose any section of the text maybe down the page choose a paragraph or whatever and you see that there is a pink bubble appearing there on the right hand side yeah, mm -hmm. there. So that allows you to uh, 
create a comment that is attached to that section of the text. So okay. give it a go. You can write something or you can even leave a voice note as well. Your <laughs> it's pick it up. It's, <laughs> it's pick it up. Whatever. It's picking up ears. It's picking up what yeah. it is. I'll try that with you. So I was trying to show there the um, up here when I use the text box, I use my typewriter. But obviously down here, I was going to use the speech input. So I'll turn it on again. So this is just another method. Um, sorry, this one. So this is just another method for the student to work. Get information, ask questions. Easy. Perfect. Strong accent. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad yeah. you did it because it, it struggles with my accent a little bit more than with yours. <laughs> well, my accent's maybe just as bad as some people. But again, it's just a doubt. I always say this. With all of our accessibility solutions, with all of our tools, we always give multiple ways of accessing the information, of replying to the information. If they maybe struggle, even say you hurt your shoulder, you can't use a keyboard, use the dictation. There's just so many ways of you using this. And students are very used to... Um, I always say now, I, I constantly listen to, I what am I trying to say? Audios. Um, podcasts. Podcasts. Or, what is wrong yeah. with me today? <laughs> podcasts. So we're so used to now audio, getting information through an audio way. So I'm able to give you audio feedback as, to, as a teacher, and I'm able to get it as a student as well, which I think is very good, the way that students are learning at the minute. Brilliant. Very good. So pretty much we've covered everything. I, I don't think there's a point in going it shows a line, shows a rectangle, shows a circle. Yeah. That's the idea. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. And probably what I, I think it would be interesting to do now is uh, show show the folks on the line how you could, if you were a teacher, so let's get out of the student role that we've been playing here. Say now you're a teacher, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, because we're right now working in Google Drive, probably we're a Google school. So we're going to use that as an example right now. This is going to be available as well for Office 365 uh, schools or accounts in, in the near future. But say now that you're a teacher, this is the PDF that you want to share with your students as a reading material. Uh, you've created a few notes, you've added some instructions, and you're ready to share that with your students using Google Classroom, okay? So yeah, exactly. First click that little arrow there and click share with students. So what Laura is doing there is telling Orbit Note that the notes that she has created are notes that she wants to share with her students. It's not about personal notes. It's notes that she wants to make available for everybody in the class. And now click on the classroom icon on the right-hand side of the toolbar, and that's going to open Laura's Google Classroom. It's all okay, Sorry, it opened on the other screen there, two seconds. So there's there, so. Yeah, so you might want to create it. Well, you have to choose your class. What are you choosing, Laura's Orbit Notes class? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's, because, just what what, it's just what It's just that I can read it. It says Laura's Orbit Note class. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. And then create an assignment and then go. So you can see that that is Classroom, actually. We're just creating a shortcut. There's nothing different. You could actually do this from Classroom. But the mm -hmm. nice thing about starting this process in, in Orbit Note is that it's just straightforward. So you can see that's a PDF there. Laura, make it avail make a copy for each student there. It says, no, use the last option there that says, make a copy for each student. Mm -hmm. And then add a title. The title could be, I need a coffee urgently after this webinar. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just, that's what I just want to highlight here is that this is the normal way you would yeah. assign work in Google Classroom. Uh, we've just used a shortcut from Orbit Node, but if you go to Classroom, you create an assignment, and you do everything the normal way, uh, it will it will work, which is something that we have worked hard on. Uh, we don't want teachers or students to do anything differently to a normal way of working. Okay, so there's not really much to learn. You forgot to click on assign. Oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> it's a way not. <laughs> so, They'll not get the homework tonight. Yeah, well, okay. So if Laura would have clicked on assign, um, it would have gone to the student and then the student just very easily can just click on the PDF and then it will open automatically on Orbit Note. The student doesn't have to do anything special. They don't even know that they are working with Orbit Note. Yeah. It's just a new toolbar that appeared there. Sometimes people come to us and say, we thought it was an upgrade or something new happening in Google Classroom. So that's how, how connected, how well integrated it is. Okay, so guys can focus on learning rather than learning from new tools, basically.
So I think I think that's us covering the whole toolbar. Is that right, Laura? Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm just so, going to remove my screen now. Um, do you have I'm the slides again, my... Gustavo? Yeah. yeah. Just, just two slides at the end to finish yeah. off. So we have. So I hope you've enjoyed that. We just wanted to try something different with me as the student, just to show you how, actually how easy it is um, when somebody's talking you through it. Um, I do think it's very, very easy to use. As you've seen there, when you put it into Classroom, at the very beginning, that's what it would have looked like. That would have been assigned to me. I opened it. It asked me to scan it. I scanned it, and then everything became available. So it's very, very um, intuitive, and hopefully yeah. all the students will pick it up quite quickly. And we focused on the student side there, but... Imagine that from a teacher's point of view, being able to mark PDFs, give feedback on a PDF and send it straight to the students. It's going to be absolutely brilliant. So it's an ongoing tool, I would say, Gustavo. So we've released it as oh, it yeah. is today, but we're continuously development, developing it over the next six months to a year. So on the yeah. screen now is just um, premium features against freemium features. Um, and is everything, what's oh, OCR is already available and what's coming up is insert images, split and merge and digital signatures. Yeah. And the freemium features on the right hand side, is iPad support available yet, Gustavo? No, not yet. No. It's coming Are up. they all yeah. coming? They're all coming. So They're all coming. They're all in the roadmap. Yeah. So this is what's coming. So it's only going to get better. So if you mm -hmm. want any information on it, um, if you want a trial of it, please do let us know. What you could do is email orbit to laura o at texthelp.com and I can get in contact. And I know some of you are already using it. Any feedback you have would be absolutely brilliant. Yeah, or or if you're already using it and we can do a session with your staff so you can use it better, so we can mm -hmm. help you just to sp spread the message there and maybe repeat something like what you've seen today, we'll be more than happy to do it again. So definitely send Orbit to Laura and, and we'll do whatever you think would be of value for you guys. Yeah. And last one, Laura, yep. Yes, there's it. our details on the screen. <laughs> Once so again. So thanks very much and hopefully hear from you all soon. Right, thank you guys.